I'd like to talk today about Anarchapoco and public relations surrounding it, public relations issues. Anarchapoco is an incredible conference, convention. Now it's being called a festival, I believe. It happens in Acapulco, Mexico. Jeff Berwick started it three or four years ago. Uh, I didn't make it the first year. Uh, I made it the second year. Uh, didn't make it the following. Going back this year. Um, it's going to be wonderful. It's the best uh, event that I've been to, and I've, I've traveled to a number of them. And uh, I'm weighing in here just offering uh, constructive feedback, ideas, uh, some things I think are doing really right, some things I think aren't so right. Um, eh, hopefully this uh, helps any of you that are thinking about starting up a festival or a convention. I'm going to preface this with uh, just making it very clear that this conference does not belong to me. It is a product that is being offered by a company. I'm sure that there's some legal form that... Anarchapoco LLC or something like that. And I hope that it's a money-making thing. I assume that it is. Um, that's wonderful. I hope that the people involved, the investors, the people that put it on, I hope they make a ton of money and I hope they keep producing good, good content. Public relations, propaganda, as it applies to this. I thought of this recently as I look at all of the events, all the different things that are happening at Anarchapoco 2019, and I see some real issues, not in the short term, but in the long term for the, if you can call it a freedom movement or the, the libertarian community. Uh, and when I say libertarian, I'm not talking about the pseudo-libertarians with a capital L that vote and run for office and all this. I'm talking about principled libertarians that take things to the uh, logical uh, uh, furthest extent. can't think of the word. Um, in Anarchapoco, uh, there have been a number of events added that I think are bad in the long run for public relations. There is a rage room, uh, rage against the state or against the machine. And this is a takeoff on the ever-growing popular rage rooms that have popped up around the country. And you go in, you pay your money, and you take a baseball bat or whatever, and you beat up glasses and plates and a TV or whatever it is that you, you pay for, and you just destroy a bunch of property. You go into this big rage, and you destroy a bunch of stuff, and then you let that out of your system. And on the surface, that kind of sounds fun and harmless. Um, if Those of you that have studied psychology, you, you see the problem, and that's, that's an issue when it comes to propaganda, public relations, with the uh, reputation that the anarchist community, uh, the anarcho-capitalist community, that we're going to have. We have worked so hard, many of us, to say, no, we are kind of boring, geeky, academic people. We are not angry. We are happy. We see great possibility in the future. We see a very evil, nasty, bad thing, the state, and the things that surround it, with this dangerous superstition, we of uh, you know, believing in authority, we see this, and when we're combating against it, but we're happy, positive, academic-minded, academically-minded, <laughs> that's funny right there, uh, type people, and we're, we're smart, we're, we're peaceful. Well, the Rage Room is not for smart or peaceful people. It is for those that haven't found better ways to deal with their stress or their issues, and they want to turn to violence. They want to initiate violence against inanimate objects. I don't think it's against the NAP, because uh, I think the NAP applies to people, not glasses in a room. But it's definitely very violent, and it's encouraging this violent outburst. No, that's, that's a bad idea. And I... I don't care if you do it. I mean, I don't care if you go to a rage room. It's fine. It's none of my business. Um, I would suggest that there's some better ways to put one's mind at, at ease with the world and to calm down. But that's we are, we're all on our own journey. Um, another issue I have is the uh, the drug culture. I'm not talking about what I think are dangerous, illegal drugs. I could care less what somebody does, but. The mainstream 
folks in the United States at least do not look at ayahuasca or other plant medicines as anything other than drugs. And if they are looking at this event and they see that it's going to be a, a there's a drug culture there. These are all propaganda terms that are used against people like us. And I'm simply suggesting let's not just hand it to the people we're opposed to, the philosophy we're opposed to, on a silver platter. So now we have anarchists that are going to be doing violent things. Definitely people will take videos of themselves doing it. Guess what? The opponents of freedom are going to you know, splice these clips together. They're going to show that. There's going to be a, uh, a nude pool. Great. Nudity is awesome. Swinging is awesome. If everybody's into it, nobody's being harmed, go for it. Not talking about the right or wrong of it. All I'm talking about is the public perception. The perception of the, the mainstream. Now, if we don't care, if you don't care what mon pa that have the market down the street think, then this doesn't apply to you. You're not listening at this point anyway. For those of you that are still listening, you do kind of think that there needs to be a, a long view of how we conduct ourselves since we are kind of the first 20 or 30,000 people in a movement that's growing rapidly. We need to kind of, I think we would be wise to, we don't need to do anything, we'd be wise to think strategically about how we conduct our, our lives. Um, so we've talked about the drug culture. We've talked about the wild, crazy orgies. We know that's, eh, it might happen, <laughs> never mind. We've talked about the uh, rage room, the, the violence. Um, what else? There was something else. Uh, I'm going to put this on pause for a moment while I think about it. There was another thing that struck me as not so great. Evidently, whatever I was trying to think of uh, has slipped my mind. Uh, and I, I did have a little bit the... Uh, the unschooling movement, which I support 100%. I actually send people Dana Martin's way and say, hey, do you really love your kids? You need to you need to check this stuff out. And I don't have any children at this point. I'm a grandpa. But for those that have children, I'm a big supporter of the unschooling or at least homeschooling movement. Having said this, what does the mainstream think about taking children out of school, denying them an education. Now, you and I know that this is complete BS. Complete BS. That's how you give them an education, by taking them out of a government indoctrination camp. However, when we're presenting to the world, not the best way to put it out there. So, those are a few of my thoughts. Look at these up-and-coming folks in the, in the movement. Back when I got into it 10 years ago, there were hardly any role models or people putting out digestible literature. There were a number of high IQ scientific type people that would put out a 30 page detailed paper. But for today's fast thinking, short attention span people, look at the content just in the last five years. Look at all of the new people contributing to this this movement toward toward liberty, toward freedom. Just in the last few months, I've come across Patrick Smith, uh, Chris Voluntarist. Um, Yaakov is doing great things, but he has been for a long time behind the scenes. And there are a number of people that are really moving and shaking things. And I mentioned two names. There are hundreds at this point that are putting out little bits of content and some of them consistently for a while, some of them long term. And this is wonderful. This was not available 10 years ago. I had options of, even at that point, Larkin's uh, material, there wasn't that much of it. Um, I had Larkin and I had uh, the statist. He wasn't a statist at that time, uh, Stefan Molyneux. And I kind of had those guys and then Mises Institute. Uh, there was some fee stuff, but I kind of at that point, hmm. It wasn't as great as it is now under under Jeffrey's leadership. Um, so anyway, I guess what I'm saying is we are living in wonderful times. Let's guard our reputation. Let's live so that we look good to the outside world. That's my admonishment to myself and to the rest of the community, or suggestion anyway. What do you think? Do you agree, or should we just say, yeah, screw what everybody thinks, we're doing the right thing? Let's charge forward and 
uh, just go for it. What do you think?